Peggy 18. Hi, my name is Colin Graham, and I'm the animation director on Watch Dogs 2. Today we want to give you a look at our free roaming demo and give you a more detailed look at the open world and the Bay Area. This video is recorded from an alpha build of Watch Dogs 2 running on PS4. In Watch Dogs 2, we've expanded our hacking tools to give the players more options. By tapping and releasing the L1 shoulder button, we can do a contextual quick hack on this person. If we want more hacking options, we simply hold the L1 button while focusing on our target. Now we can see that there's four contextual hacks available on this car. Using the L1 button in two different ways allows the players to have fast access to the most common hacks, but it also opens up additional contextual hacks. This gives the player more hacking options than before. We've also added a net hack view to the hacking toolkit, which allows you to toggle a digital filter to see the world like a hacker. We can easily pick out hacking opportunities and also pick out strange digital signals and data anomalies that are of interest to us. The orange signal indicates that there's a person whose digital profile has interesting properties for us to investigate. So let's take a closer look. When we're exploring the world, NetHack is a very useful tool to help us identify people or items of interest. It's a really good idea when you explore the open world to use your NetHack and look around because you never know what you'll find. We can hack into his phone and read his text messages to get a clue about what's happening. As a hacker, it's really easy for Marcus to get someone's personal information. This guy's text messages indicate that he's experiencing strange behavior happening on his phone. He seems to think that it happens every time he comes to this exact area. Let's see what our DedSec teammates think about these strange signals. That felt like a rock star post. Found something weird. Sweet! Get a dish. No, I mean, my MC catcher detector is going off. We really need to find a better name for that. Why? That's the technical name. My stingray sniffer tells me somebody's leaching data off of people's phones below. Looks like the data's going to... Koitao. Oh, nice. See? Weird. Weird indeed. Marcus has detected that there's an illegal Stingray box deployed somewhere around Coit Tower. We now have access to a new DedSec operation and we can track it with our DedSec app. You can do any operation you want in the order that you want as long as you've discovered it and it's in your DedSec app. With the net hack, we can see the Stingray box is deployed all the way on the top of Coit Tower. But since the tower is closed, we're going to have to find another way to reach it. You still have a little on your nose. In Watch Dogs 2, Marcus has some custom-built toys to play with, so we can just deploy our quadcopter and fly it to the top. Coit Tower is an iconic landmark known for its great view. From here, you can see the whole city is accessible. You can visit landmarks like Sutro Tower, you can explore Golden Gate Park, or take a drive across the bridge to Marin. You can sail the bay on a sailboat, or you can visit Alcatraz, or maybe take a selfie with the sea lions on Pier 39. You can also travel across the Bay Bridge to Oakland, or take the freeway south to Silicon Valley. You can also take your time and explore San Francisco's diverse neighborhoods like Chinatown, Castro, or even the Tenderloin. With the drone, we can easily hack into the Stingray box and track its source. This one is operated by Graystrom, who are illegally installing these boxes all across the city. The open world is full of opportunities like this DedSec operation. All you have to do is explore the environment using NetHack and the Profiler to find them all. There we go. This one has a breadcrumb trail I can follow. Nice. Where's he go? Hmm. Looks like Graystrom set up a warehouse out by the piers. You wanna bet I can find some shady shit in there? Definitely some shady shit in there. We can open our smartphone and select the DedSec app to track this operation. We use the DedSec app to manage all of our activities in Watch Dogs. We can see the objectives on our map, and it's not very far, so we can drive there pretty quickly. The Noodle Map app can be used to locate different landmarks and areas of interest. The entire Bay Area is yours to explore from the very beginning of the game, so you don't need to unlock anything. There's also a shop on Pier 39 where we can customize Marcus's outfit, and there's some other open world activities we can check out along the way too. Let's take this car and head down to the waterfront. Cars are particularly vulnerable to a hacker like Marcus, and you can acquire a skill that allows you to simply unlock any car in the game with your phone. One of the biggest feedbacks we got from the fans after the first Watch Dogs game was about the driving. We've significantly improved the driving to make it more responsive and accessible to a wider number of players. 
Driving was reworked extensively with a team of experts from Ubisoft Reflections. This is a particularly important improvement because San Francisco is known for its steep hills and its tight winding streets. Of course, driving and hacking go hand in hand, and you can still hack steam pipes, traffic lights, and you can also hack individual vehicles. As you can see, it's much easier to drive through the city in Watch Dogs 2. Let's pull up here at iconic Pier 39 and take a quick look around. Up ahead is a clothing store, so let's go give Marcus a new look. Each clothing store has the style of the people who live in that area, so as you travel around the world, you can start to build a wardrobe that's as diverse as San Francisco itself. There are over 700 unique items of clothing that Marcus can purchase to wear, with over a billion possible combinations. We can go into the fitting room menu and browse a selection of items found in the store. Let's start by switching up Marcus's jacket. Each item of clothing in the shop is handcrafted to fit Marcus's overall look. You can mix and match any pieces of clothing you want. You can change your hat, glasses, face mask, bag, shirt, pants, and shoes. There's some nice Normcore hoodies in here, but I think we should go with the shirt with the giant skull on it. Let's take a look at what we got for shoes. Since people who come to Pier 39 are often tourists, we have styles of shoes that they would buy. We can go with these comfortable gator shoes, or maybe some open-toe sandals. Or if you really want to make a statement, you can buy the awkward socks and sandals combo. In the end though, I think we should go with Stars and Stripes Chucks. We could really stay here all day trying on clothes, and each store has a wide variety of clothing options, so you can really make Marcus look the way you want. From biker leather to hip-hop, from pinstripe suits to tie-dye tank tops, you can really craft the look that's unique to you. In Watch Dogs 2, you manage your activities from your smartphone. There's an app shop, a media player, the DedSec app, and a research app that allows you to develop new skills. Let's take a look in the app shop to find the ScoutX app. San Francisco is full of iconic landmarks, so as you explore the world, you'll find new ScoutX objectives in the app. Once we've installed it, we can find nearby landmarks and go check them out. When you visit San Francisco, there's so many great landmarks to visit. The ScoutX app will be like your tour guide in Watch Dogs 2. We're right near the crab statue on Pier 39, so let's go to that one right now. These tourists have the right idea. We'll just pop open our phone and select our camera and take a picture of this giant crab. Let's make it a selfie and use the California Vibe filter. What's that? Uploading the photos to the ScoutX app will give you more followers, and you'll need those followers to progress through the game. So we had a look around and we bought some new clothes, but let's get back on track and head to that next pier, and we'll take care of that stolen data at the Graystrom site. We can see the objective marker in our mini-map, and it's also displayed in orange at the end of the pier. Let's park our car past the scissor lift and go scout the place on foot. Operations in Watch Dogs 2 are almost always a free approach, so you can go after the objective from any direction. Let's start by getting into cover and scanning our enemies and see if we can spot the objective. From there we can make a plan of attack. We can launch our drone and scout the area. We can use our net hack view to see that there are guards patrolling the rooftop and the objective is in a small office. There are also some civilian workers that might notice us, so we need to avoid them too. In the net hack view, we can see that the door is electronically locked, but it can be bypassed by a junction box on the lower level. The connection is shown in a red line. Unfortunately, that box is protected by an armed guard and an attack dog. So we'll probably have trouble if we try to sneak past the dog in person, but luckily Marcus has another toy, which is the RC jumper. This little guy is small and much harder for enemies to detect. The RC Jumper is another dead set gadget that gives Marcus a different way to approach obstacles in the layout. The RC Jumper has this cool little robotic arm that's been hacked into the body. This allows him to physically interact with objects and allows Marcus to stay safely hidden. 
Now the junction box is unlocked and we can open the door upstairs. We can hack that scissor lift that we passed on the way in and reach the rooftop. By hacking into the OS of the scissor lift, Marcus can take remote control of it. Not only can you raise it up and down, but you can actually drive it around anywhere you want in the world. This level of control gives players total freedom when dreaming up an approach to a mission. Our first challenge is to get past the guard in front of us. So let's hack into the security camera and see how he might be vulnerable. There's an industrial air conditioner unit that we can hack. We can set it to explode when the guard comes close, and we can hack it to attract the guard with a strange noise. There, that... The guard will go investigate the noise and walk straight into the trap we set. And just like that, we've taken out the guard, created a distraction, and slipped into the compound. A more direct way to neutralize a guard is to use the non-lethal stun gun. Marcus has an array of non-lethal tools and techniques, and you can complete the entire game without actually killing a single enemy. Since we already unlocked this door with our RC jumper, we can just quick hack it to open it. Now we're in the room, we just need to install one of our custom DedSec boxes into this Bloom terminal. And we've completed our final objective. All that's left to do now is escape undetected. Each operation we undertake will give us more followers. And more followers will allow you to take on even bigger operations. So let's get off this pier and explore a little bit more. Tell me you fucked up their hardware. I left an expensive little present in their system and they're going to pay for it. Damn, you sound like Jimmy Siska. Hell yeah. Up ahead, we'll notice there's another player hanging about. He's easy to spot because of the purple icon and the gamer tag over his head. In Watch Dogs, your game session can be seamlessly merged and you will often encounter other players exploring the world just like you. This guy looks really friendly. We have an opportunity to join up and form a co-op party, so let's send him an invite. Now that we're joined in a session, we can complete co-op missions together and take on even bigger and tougher targets. Two hackers are better than one. We're going to head across the bay to Prescott, which is in North Oakland, to infiltrate a gang lair. We can get there by driving across the bay bridge together. Alright, we can see that we're in a much different neighborhood than before. This is Prescott, a subdistrict of North Oakland, and the location of our next co-op operation. With our partner, we can go together and activate this mission. Marcus, we have operations popping up everywhere. Some of them are two hacker jobs. Where you need me? Sending you the coordinates. And Marcus, it works both ways. When you need help, fire off a call and we'll send someone your way for the assist. This area is a free approach, so we can tackle it any style we want. Since we're now two hackers working together, we'll cover our partner from the sky and help him out with some well-timed hacks. We can distract this guard by hacking his phone and our friend will take him down very stealthily. We'll continue to scout the area and find more lookouts, like this gang member on the rooftop. We can automatically tag them, and once they're tagged, both players can see them. Our partner is going to sneak up on the rooftop and take out this guard, and we can help him with some well-timed hacks. If we use a contextual hack on this transformer box, we can attract the guard. Our partner has an easy shot with his stun gun from that distance. Using the net hack view again, we can see that there's a lockbox connected by red connection lines to a room on the other side of the compound. Inside this room, we see our two targets meeting up, and it's a perfect place to take them down simultaneously. We need to get that box unlocked and get into that room. As we continue to scout this area, we can see this compound has a lot more guards than the last one, and they look very heavily armed. We'll need to take care of these guards if we get detected. 
There's also a car parked in the garage, so we might need that to escape later. Let's go back to our friend and get him to disable that junction box so we can unlock the door to our target. The drone has a lot of flexibility and it's small and hard to detect, but the trade-off is that you can't physically interact with objects like this junction box. But it's not a problem for our man on the ground to do that for us. The signal lines have changed from red to blue, so now we know that we can open the doors and get to our targets. Scouting phase is done, so let's get up on that rooftop with our partner and get close enough to neutralize these enemies. We can hack these junction boxes and set a proximity trigger on them. They'll explode if an enemy passes through them, but they won't be triggered if we pass through them ourselves. We can also deploy electroshock mines from our inventory, and they're fully hackable too. It's a good idea to leave traps for your enemies in case they try to flank you. Our partner is camped out by the door, ready to rush into the room, but we're going to create a distraction first. We'll get into position behind these crates, and this time we'll launch our RC jumper. Once our partner opens the door, we'll zip in and create a distraction. Our jumper has another feature too. It can launch foul mouth taunts and make people angry. Now's our chance. The gang leaders are distracted, so let's rush the room. This guy was pretty tough, but getting a thunderbolt to the face will ruin his day. Now we have a cell phone and all the evidence that we need. We just need to plan a way out of here. We can switch back to our quadcopter, which is hovering where we left it, and take a look at what's going on from the sky. We can see one of the guards is rushing up the stairs to help his boss, but our partner has that door covered with his dead sec rifle. There's another guard on the ground level who's alerted to our gunfire, so let's use a contextual hack on him. We've changed his profile to make a rival gang think that he's a police informant. The rival gang will come to this compound and take care of him for us. Things are heating up, so we're gonna have to improvise a little bit. We can hack the car in the garage and reverse it away from the enemy so we can use it for our getaway. The rival gang just arrived and they've engaged in a gang war with the remaining guards. And these guys aren't messing about, they're armed with grenades and body armor. We'll take some higher ground and use our DedSec 3D printed assault rifle to take them on. There's still one guard left, so we can hack his headset, which leaves him vulnerable to a takedown. Let's take our stolen ride and get out of here before cops show up. And just like that, we're home free. We took down both gang leaders, we got the evidence we needed, and we triggered a gang war, and we escaped without getting killed. That's teamwork. Two hackers and one successful DedSec operation. Let's take a minute to talk about a brand new multiplayer PvP event called Online Bounty. When the player commits a crime, the police will respond and pursue the player until he can escape from the police. We call that the felony system. While you're in the felony, a bounty event can occur. A bounty event allows up to three other online players to join the pursuit and try to kill the player for as long as the felony lasts. As the target player of the bounty, your objective is to evade the felony and the pursuing players. Rewards are given for neutralizing the hunters. And the objective of the hunters is to neutralize the target player. Bounty is a seamless PvP event that's triggered by your player style and how you interact with the police. If you are the type of player who's always in conflict with police, you'll have a higher chance of having a bounty placed on you. But if you can neutralize the hunters, you'll get additional rewards. I hope you've enjoyed our walkthrough of the open world of Watch Dogs 2, and I hope to see you online November 15th. For the players.